Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. The partial government shutdown is now in its 18th day, which makes it the second longest in history. And while the president says it could go on for months or even years, he has been trying to lessen the impact. I'm Mark Liverman in New York, and I'll tell you how he plans on doing it. And back here at home, a split among Republicans has been healed in Helena, but Democrats still say rules that govern which laws can be even discussed still leave too much power in the hands of just a few people. Coming up, arguments from both sides. Good morning to you. It is 6.30 here on your Tuesday. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman. Matt Elwin will have our forecast here in just a moment. Our top story is we've been following closely. The partial government shutdown is now in its 18th day, making this it the second longest in history. President Trump has been demanding a border wall throughout the shutdown. Tonight, he'll give his most formal argument to date. CBS's Mark Liverman is in New York with the details. President Trump will give his first primetime Oval Office address tonight. He'll argue his case to the American people for a wall at the U.S.-Mexico border. We have a, an absolute crisis and of criminals and gang members coming through. It is national security. It's a national emergency. It's an issue Mr. Trump has been making since the day he announced he was running for president in 2015. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some... I assume are good people. President Trump remains deadlocked with congressional Democrats over his demand for $5 billion for border wall funding. He'll visit the border on Thursday. There is no security <laughs> crisis at the border. Democrats will offer a rebuttal immediately after his speech. I expect the president to lie to the American people. Why do I expect this? Because he has been lying to the American people. Trying to lessen the impact of the shutdown, the Trump administration announced the IRS will process tax returns and provide refunds to taxpayers. Mark Bezour of the Tax Policy Center says that will be a relief to thousands of Americans. People often rely on their tax refunds to either pay bills that they may have piled up during the holiday season or to make a purchase of a consumer durable or even things like rent and food and so on. The IRS will have to recall furloughed workers, meaning they'll be working without pay. Mark Liverman, CBS News. Now, White House Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney says if an agreement isn't reached by midnight tonight, about 800,000 federal workers will miss this week's paycheck. It's caused concern that employees, especially TSA agents, will start calling out sick at higher rates. And here in Montana, Republican Senator Steve Dayen says he won't predict an end to the shutdown, but tells MTN that it needs to end as soon as possible. This weekend, he wrote a letter to the Acting Secretary of the Interior, David Bernhardt, to secure funds for National Park Services during this shutdown. He says Bernhardt told him on Sunday millions of dollars alone will now go towards National Parks in Montana for critical services like trash removal and plowing. Dane says he'll also introduce legislation to put a stop to government shutdowns in the future. Right now, the senator says both sides must be willing to compromise to open the government back up, but he says the increasing border security isn't an unreasonable request. Speaker Pelosi says it's zero. President Trump says five billion. They can meet somewhere in between there and get this sorted out. I was in business for 28 years. We've got to figure out a way to go forward here. We can open the government up, which we need to do, and fund the border security. Now, Danes was speaking in Helena to the Montana Commerce uh, Chamber of Commerce Business Days Conference. Republican Congressman Greg Gianforte also spoke at that conference. Now, it's not clear how Yellowstone National Park will respond to a directive from the Interior Department to use fees to support park services. The memo directs parks to use the money to address restrooms and sanitation, trash collection and road maintenance. Campground operations are also included in the funding list. Uh, in Yellowstone, the only campground open in the winter is at Mammoth. Law enforcement, emergency operations and entrance gate staffing is also to be maintained uh, with that fee money. In Yellowstone, road maintenance has been maintained throughout the shutdown to provide access to the communities of Silvergate and Cook City. Zantera is helping to pay for snow removal to ensure access to the facilities in the park. National Parks uh, Conservation Association has opposed using the fees for everyday operation, saying that money is normally reserved for long-term projects. The association says using the money now will make the infrastructure backlog in the park even 
worse. Let's not hope it's too much more long term. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Again, uh, CBS will carry live. Uh, we'll right here on KBZK KXLF uh, President's uh, address tonight. Of course. There you go. Of course. Matt joins us now, uh, hitting a little bit of that, I dare use the word warm, but certainly warmer than what we've had. We have a trend that's going to be warmer this week, but it's also unfortunately going to be on the drier side. Mm. So you know, take it with a grain of salt, yeah. I guess. Uh, temperatures uh, basically a mixed bag. Temperatures into the teens, 20s, and below zero. We've got it all for you, folks. Temperature sitting at 10 degrees in West Yellowstone, 16 in Belgrade, 3 below in Butte. It looks like our temperature should start to boost this afternoon right to the 30 degree mark. Our best potential of seeing some snow showers probably stay in the mountains overnight tonight. Talk about our warm up and our potential snow uh, moving into the area. That's all coming up in just a few minutes. So that grain of salt won't be road salt. It won't. All right, <laughs> 635 then, our top uh, local story this half hour. Bozeman Police Department has identified Sergeant Ben Green as the officer involved in a shooting incident that left one man dead last Friday. Uh, following the shooting, Bozeman police officers are being offered counseling services. Officers have the opportunity to take part in counseling all year long, and whenever there is a traumatic event, they go through what is called crisis stress management. This program shows officers the physical and mental signs that they should watch out for and ways they can go and get help. There's help, and it's not anything that anybody needs to be ashamed of. Um, I think the, the old days of you kind of suck it up and, and, and truck on are over with, and um, we're, we understand the importance of, of keeping care of your mental health. Now, Sergeant Green is on paid administrative leave while an investigation is carried out. Families of the officers and people who witnessed the shooting can also receive those counseling services. And yesterday, Montana's 2019 legislature session got underway at the state capitol, and it wasn't all pomp and circumstance on the first day. House Republicans adopted some significant changes to the rules, and MTN's Mike Dennison has our details. Republicans control a 58 to 42 majority in the Montana House, but a block made up mostly of moderate Republicans objected to pass rules that gave leadership the power to kill bills they don't like by assigning them to certain committees. On Monday, however, the two sides reached a compromise, worked out in a private meeting on Sunday night. All 58 Republicans voted Monday to temporarily adopt the new rules. House Speaker Greg Hertz of Polson, who initially opposed any rule change, said Monday the compromise shows that the GOP enters the session united rather than split. These rules are designed for a fair, open, and transparent process. Republicans are united behind the ideas of limited government, lower taxes, and making Montana a better place to live and work and do business. Under the new rules, a simple majority, 51 members, can overrule the Speaker's decision on which committee gets a bill and the Speaker's assignment of committee members. It also reduced from 60 to 58 the number of votes needed to remove a bill stalled in committee to the floor. But State Representative Nancy Balance, who helped negotiate the rule changes, says the other changes are more important. We wanted a level playing field, make sure that everyone had a fair opportunity to get their bill to the floor. And I think we've absolutely done that in this motion. All 42 House Democrats voted against the change, saying the simple majority rule should also apply to moving a bill from committee to the floor. But Republicans were determined to settle this controversy on their own. I think we came to a good place. Uh, there was a lot of angst, but a lot of times you, don't, you can't get to this place until 24 hours before you actually get here. Uh, speaker knew that, we knew that, and I think everybody did a good job on it. Now that the question of House rules appears settled, we'll see later what it looks like in practice when the tough bills start hitting the pavement. From the floor of the Montana House, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Now the 2019 session starts its first committee meetings today. So again, we'll be following all of that. Right. Uh, in other international news, UK Pink Floyd cover band found itself in an interesting situation, maybe up against the wall. Oh, Ooh, there we go. Good one. Now the group <laughs> booked a gig in Israel, but Roger Waters, the former lead and actual singer, lead uh, singer of Pink Floyd, said the musicians should boycott Israel altogether instead. And then lawyers got involved, and then the cover band came up with a way to resolve the situation, at least musically. Very confusing, Ian Lee explains. What do, you want from me? what do you want from me? Well, if you're Roger Waters from Pink Floyd, that answer is simple. 
to boycott Israel or stop playing his music. UK Pink Floyd Experience, a group of super fan musicians, became the latest target of the legendary rocker after they announced their tour in Israel. Waters took to Facebook, urging the band to cancel because of Israel's treatment of Palestinians. His voice has divided the music world. Lana Del Rey and Lord both canceled shows after facing pressure from boycott advocates, while Radiohead ignored it, playing in Tel Aviv. Every third artist that we are connecting with said no Israel, and not because the policy of Israel, because they're afraid from that what's happening in Facebook and, and what's happening, you know, in the internet. Having Waters call them out put UK Pink Floyd experience in a tight spot, so they canceled their three shows. Only to abruptly reverse that decision, lawyers apparently winning the argument. We're obliged to fulfill our contractual obligation to perform, ran a statement from the band, with the concert's profits going to UNICEF. You know, we won, let's face it, we won. Maybe, but with Waters disapproving stare still hanging over them, the band came up with a fix. The experience would not play any of the Pink Floyd songs he penned, so no money, time, or another brick in the wall. Instead, those tunes were played by an Israeli cover band who joined them on stage. I saw these guys on uh, YouTube and so on, and I thought, blimey, they're good. Uh, so we asked, could we do something together? Uh, to uh, kind of cement UK and Israeli relationships and uh, make music the power of love. Some fans, though, weren't feeling the love. We came for uh, Dark Side of the Moon, and that was already played by an Israeli band, which is quite weird. The echo band from Israel yeah. was uh, better of the, uh, the guys come from the uh, UK. Is that why you're leaving early? Or? Yes, sure. It may not have been the performance they wanted, but it's the performance they got. And from the reaction of the crowd, at least for many, it was worth the money. Thank you for making us so welcome again. Good night. Ian Lee, CNN, Tel Aviv. Very interesting, interesting story there, yeah, no doubt That's why it. Pinky and the Floyd doesn't travel to Israel. That's they don't they run into that problem. Stay mostly in Montana and some, yeah. others, yeah. some other cool spots. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us here on your Tuesday morning. Coming up, we're going to Vegas, the biggest tech convention of the year. What happens there, we'll broadcast later. Yeah. In the meantime, John Dickerson <laughs> has a look at what's coming up at 7. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. Vice President Mike Pence gives our Major Garrett a preview of tonight's presidential address. See whether the president is willing to compromise to end the 18-day partial government shutdown. Plus, Golden Globe winner Regina King will be with us in Studio 57. We'll talk to her about her role in If Beale Street Could Talk and who she looked to for inspiration. See you with all that at 7.